Wow, quite impressive wood carving there. I've always been envious of people who can draw or sculpt, carve, paint. I tried doing a watercolour once. I think I was about 45 at the time. Uh, in the words of uh, someone highly qualified in art, it looked like a nine-year-old had done it. Bridge 130 and three miles to Fenny Compton. Tale of Aslan and the Gent to be seen their travels before. Well, did you know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more? Sold up, downsized for a minimalized alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before. One man, one life, one boat. Exceptionally tight air. And a bridge. <coughs> a regular comment I receive is what happened to the gangplank which I had in earlier seasons. Quite simply, just before I set off on season eight, leaving Garstang Marina, I realized that since 2017, I'd never used it. And it was just clutter. So I got rid of it. In the Nicholson Guide, this is simply known as Footbridge and signals two and a half miles to Fenny Compton. very strong sense of history along this part of the Oxford. A history as old as the oak trees themselves, I'd say. Coming up on Bridge 133, Old Town Bridge, which carries a path that leads to the site of the old medieval village of Wormleighton, 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 Leighton, Wormleighton. I'll just say Wormleighton, and why not? Though nothing remains apart from a patch of ground. Sure sign I'm approaching a farm, and not just that, they're mowing. 
as the canal is full of chaff. I just hope it doesn't get blown over Aslan and me as we go by. Don't want to speak too soon, but I might have escaped it. There's little specks flying around. They've covered a considerable area. One thirty four Wells Bridge. And afterwards, I'm going to be in the area I was looking to moor up. But if mowing's going on and everything's getting plastered in this chaff, I don't want to moor there, do I? Afterwards, it's Bridge 135, but that's getting closer to Fenny Compton and Fenny Compton Wharf, and that's likely to be more sort of uh, occupied with moored boats. Well, there is here, and it's right by another boat. I don't want to go annoying them with my generator now, do I? I'll keep my fingers crossed. Coming up to bridge 135 soon, and from what I can ascertain, that will then put us right into the local hub of canal activity. Hello. I spy with my little eye something beginning with A. Is it Armco or just shuttering? It is Armco. Under the water. But it's Armco. Can't get near the edge again. And to be honest, it is a bit narrow. Right, I'm going to gamble that on the other side of this bridge there will be moorings. I know I have my bendy bullies and I have my £250 prize money, but I'm going to gamble and go for the speed boot. No way I'm doing pins. For that very reason. They just get pulled out. Oh no. Got a bit excited there, saw some armco. But it's permit holders only. Though I think it's only that particular spot there. I was told by a viewer back there that uh, there are moorings beyond this bridge. Um, but after that, it becomes permit holders only again. So this is Fanny Compton Wharf.
Yep, here we go. And I've just been told again that beyond this blue boat, it's back to permit. Better than anything. Under some trees, but you know, you can't complain. With the generator at the back of my boat, and it's fairly quiet, and there's enough surrounding background noise. No houses, so it shouldn't cause any problems. Good morning and welcome to what is quite easily the best day of the year so far. Very, very warm. A lovely overnight stop near Fenny Compton. And I did walk to the shop, though I didn't film it. You didn't miss much. About a mile and a half of a dead straight, featureless road, culminating in a few houses and what was possibly the smallest and most cramped village shop I've ever been in. Strangely, however, my copy of the Nicholson Guide, which was printed in 2000, shows the distance to the shop to be exactly a mile. However, having walked the route, I can say without any doubt it's about a mile and a half. Therefore, the only conclusion I can draw is that as my copy of the Nicholson Guide was printed 23 years ago, the distance to the shop has expanded due to global warming. Just five and a half miles today to the little canal side village of Cropredy. Along the way is a lift bridge, the first of many to come along the canal to Oxford. Also along the way I will be travelling through eight or nine locks depending on where I choose to moor up. The best part of that is they're all downhill. Despite what your eyes are now telling you, we are about to enter Fenny Compton Tunnel, which used to be a tunnel, but was then dismantled. How you dismantle a tunnel, I don't know. Do you get rid of the hill? Oh well, as I say, it used to be a tunnel, and it's still called Fenny Compton Tunnel. Bit of a tight squeeze, eh? That was Fenny Compton Tunnel, and thankfully the canal has widened up again. 
in situations like that, where the water level's already down, and the width is barely much more than that of the boat, means there's less volume of water going through the prop. And due to the boat having to push the entire canal along in front of it, through that narrow gap, progress tends to be a little bit sluggish. won't be long now before we arrive at Boundary Lift Bridge. Whether it's always kept closed or open, I'm not quite sure. Now moving back into fabulous open countryside. That's a sight to behold. There is the lift bridge and it's kept open. By the look of it, only closed when the farmer wants to use it. Perfectly weighted and counterbalanced. This here is Feeder Bridge, which used to be an outlet from a reservoir that fed the canal, but no longer exists. If you remove infrastructure, which was put in place originally to serve the canal, you're going to invite problems, eventually.
now looking at about half a mile to the first lock, Clayton Top Lock, which also naturally signals the end of the summit of the canal. And a proper emergency stop that. That was a proper emergency stop. Yeah, proper emergency stop, that. It's called skill, you know. You've either got it or you haven't. Nice gentleman there, viewer. Says that uh, I'm to blame for him now living this life. In a nice way. <laughs> I have heard that quite a lot, if I'm completely uh, frank. Um, it's quite a responsibility, really. You are to uh, you are responsible for uh, inspiring people to sort of give up what they were doing, like the rat race, bricks and mortar, and so on, and move on to the canals. further up the canal. The first lock then is just, well, by here. This is canal history right here. Oh, the lock is empty. Which means I'm going to have to use a load of water filling the lock back up. Quite a quick filler. As I say, downhill, so that's always the best. Straight up to the front gate, close the back gate, open the front panels and down you go. Okay, yep. Uh, this kind boater here, he's uh, said stay on board and he'll do it. They're the best locks.
somewhere away. Didn't tie Aslan up to open the paddles, and she's instinctively made her way towards the lock. This is the overflow which maintains the height of the canal. Usually the water should be roughly level with the top stone. that hot the water's there uh, I can make a cup of tea with it uh, if I was to buy my groceries there all week I would be bankrupt by the weekend 